can can you look at plan B that the Knicks have done and say, okay, they're better than they were by a lot last year? Or are you saying that free agency has been a failure for them? Well, I think it's a believe it or not, in a certain way, it's, it's both both answers why. I don't believe that they were a worse team than they were yesterday. I definitely believe they have to give credit, be given credit from the standpoint they're not a worse team, they're a better team. How significantly better, I'm not willing to say, but they're a better team. The problem is, and I think it's incredibly important to point this out, if Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving had ended up going someplace else, it would be different. It's not just that they didn't come to New York. It's that they ended up going to Brooklyn. And so you have a situation where two marquee headliner, marquee names that are champions decided that to build their brand, and what their greater chance at individual success as well as collective success as a team on a basketball court, they picked Brooklyn over Broadway. And you know that is more about the Knicks than it was about the Nets. And that is where your problem lies. And so if you're the New York, if you're a fan of the New York Knicks, if you're a member of the New York or, or you're a member of the New York Knicks, it's that elevated level of indictment that's aimed in your direction because that's what it comes down to. It wasn't that a situation was just so much better elsewhere. It was that a situation was deemed better right in your own backyard, which is more of an indictment against you than it is a compliment to the Brooklyn Nets, who obviously deserve a compliment for getting those players. Now, Stephen, though, the, the, the question I have, and we're trying to solve it here, we just don't know the answer. What's wrong with the Knicks? Why didn't Kyrie want to come? Why did Durant change his mind? What is he specifically wrong with them? <clears throat> All I can tell you is what happened months ago. I come on the air, and I tell you guys in America that I was literally told by folks close to them, to 95% chance that they're coming to New York, but leave the 5% window open because this is time. Oh, no. Oh. It's as quick as they eat breakfast. That's what I'm told. Then weeks later, you start hearing, well, maybe the New York Knicks, you know, the, the Oakley situation, the battles with the newspaper and the media, you know, Dolan trying to, you know, barring a fan because the fan wanted them to sell the team and these headlines that the New York Knicks get. And supposedly Dolan's a joke. You start hearing that stuff, right? Then I come to the NBA Finals, and I'm like, I'm hearing Steve, sorry to break the news to you, Kyrie. He's going to go to Brooklyn. He's going to go to Brooklyn. And KD is, is seen more as a guy that wants to join him as a guy that wants to, than a guy that wants to lead him in whatever direction KD wants to go in. He wants to play with Kyrie. Kyrie is more insistent on Brooklyn than New York. And this is the direction that they're leading in. So then you spend the last few weeks hoping beyond hope. Listen, man, there's always a chance they could change their mind. They always change their mind. The Knicks brand, there's nothing bigger in New York City. The franchise is worth about $5 billion. They're on Broadway. Dolan's got connections to Wall Street. They could do a lot of great things, blah, 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 blah. And then, lo and behold, yesterday comes, and you hear about the Kyrie announcement, you hear about the KD announcement, and you hear the Knicks announce, we have Julius Randle. So is this just coming down to Kyrie wanting to go to the Nets and Durant wanting to play with him? The, if, if Kyrie decides, I'm well, going to go to the Knicks, would Durant just have followed him? It, 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 it could be as simple as that, but you could also take other increments into consideration. Even though some would argue that KD didn't necessarily want to play with Chris Stapp's Porzingis, he did nickname him the Unicorn. He did speak fondly of him, and there was this impression, at least by some people, that KD would not have mind tra uh, playing with Porzingis. So when Porzingis goes into a four-minute meeting with Steve Mills, having insisting upon talking to Dolan, but Steve Mills informing them, look, this is not what Dolan does. He's left basketball operations to us. You know what you need to talk to me about what's going on. The next thing you know, they inform Steve Mills they want out. They want to be moved. If you don't move us, we're going to sit, sit here as a living, walking billboard advertising the fact that we don't want to be here and free agents shouldn't want to come either. So Steve Mills ends up trading you that day. But then you've got Giannis, uh, I'm sorry, you got Chris Stavros and his brother Janet, uh, Janice, and they're telling folks uh, supposedly that it wasn't like that. They didn't demand to be traded.
needed. Uh, all they wanted to do was talk to Dolan, and Steve Mills got in the way of that. You don't know who to believe, but you hear that stuff. You know that KD supposedly liked Chris Stapps for Zingas. He was fond of him. So them trading for Zingas was an asset that they let go of. Then after that, DeAndre Jordan, clearly a friend of KD and Kyrie. Everybody in the league knew that. He was acquired in that trade last year, uh, you know, with Porzingis. You ultimately get DeAndre Jordan to come on board. What happens? DeAndre Jordan arrives with the New York Knicks for the last 19 games. Being there for 19 games, averaging at about 25 minutes a game, what are we hearing on, in NBA circles? DeAndre Jordan wasn't happy. Wondered why the New York Knicks traded for him if they weren't going to play him. The New York Knicks wanted to play younger guys. They wanted him to scale it back. But here's a guy that's friends with KD. Okay, KD loves the guy. What does KD and Kyrie do the second they agree to come on board with Brooklyn? They accept reductions in the salary that they want to create $10 million in room so they can get DeAndre Jordan to come to Brooklyn with them. And he signs a 10-year, $40 million deal where the reports are it directly comes from the pocket of KD and Kyrie who wanted him on board. He was in a New York Knicks uniform. Now he's in a Nets uniform. Didn't have necessarily the greatest things in the world to say about the Knicks. And you wonder what kind of influence to believe right now. You get inside different different sides, different arguments from everybody. But in the end, this is stuff that's circulating throughout the NBA community. It's the kind of stuff that's been said about the New York Knicks. And it doesn't make them look good right now because it's emblematic of the kind of things that people have complained about in the James Dolan era. But then you also are tempted to give James Dolan a break because Michael K, he comes on with you and Peter and Don Juan and he says, look, I'm removed from basketball basketball decision. Basketball ain't my level of expertise. I've left that to other guys. Well, if the man has left it to other but he's willing to check, what are we supposed to say about James Dolan up to what point without looking at others within Madison Square Garden? Do you buy this whole narrative that's out there now that the Knicks didn't want Durant anyway because of the uh, medicals? That is a lie. The New York Knicks, uh, I reported a week ago that the New York Knicks were apprehensive about just throwing a max deal in his direction until they saw the medical report. They wanted to put forth their due diligence, dotting their eyes, crossing their teeth, getting their hands on the medical report. James Dolan wanted to do that. Steve Mills wanted to do that. Scott Perry, the medical staff, and everybody else wanted to do it. And that was that. I don't know how Do uh, Kevin Durant received that information once it was publicized, but there was no question that the New York Knicks well, they wanted to see the report. I was told under no circumstances did they give the impression that they weren't willing to offer the max to Kevin Durant. So uh, that's according to the New York Knicks. But the people outside of the New York Knicks, they're saying, guess what? They were apprehensive about paying this money to him because they didn't know when he would be ready to play basketball. So it's all contingent on what you believe. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Because when it comes to the Knicks, and specifically Madison Square Garden, perception is reality. You get into beefs like this over medical reports, a beef with the New York Daily News, a beef with a fan, a beef with Charles Oakley. It looks ten times worse when it comes from you than it coming from everybody else. Well and that is what religiously plagues the New York Knicks. I